In this video, I will discuss what convex combination of two vectors is and how you can use it. This is a popular subject on my YouTube channel, and this is the second video I do on this subject. So, a convex combination, that's a concept which you may find useful when you're facing the following task. If you have two vectors, AC and AB, and you need to find a third vector or a third point on the line between C and B, which splits this segment CB in a certain proportion given beforehand, like this. If you face such a task, finding such a splitting point which cuts the given segment in certain proportions, M to N, convex combination, is a concept which will help you to solve this task. Let me mention briefly that if you're a teacher or a tutor and you would like to reuse this presentation in your own class, you can do this with a minimal effort, very quickly. If you read how to do it in the description to this video, there's a link in the description which shows you how to do it with a minimal effort. Have a look and see if it works for you. If not, just leave me a comment and I will try to help you to make it work. So, effectively, the solution is based on vectors. And you do it like this. You, just for the sake of brevity, I will introduce two little symbols, little a and little b, to represent my vectors AC and AB. This is vector A, and this is vector B here. Now, once I change my language into the vector language, the question I need to answer is, what is the vector AD in terms of the little a and in terms of the little b? Now, given that we have a preset proportion of the length CD to BD, I can transfer this into the relation that the length CD, this length, relates to the length CB, the larger one, as m to m plus n. And I will transfer this into the language of vectors because now I can say that the CD as a vector, CD as a vector, is this much shorter than CB as a vector. Remember, when we multiply a vector by a factor, effectively on geometry on geometry side it's either stretching or shrinking that vector because this factor is less than 1. This factoring is effectively shrinking of the vector CB by this much. And now we can use vector al algebra to find the vector AD because I can do the following manipulation. I can say CB vector. CB vector. It's this long one. It's a difference of two vectors AB and AC or in my little symbol terms. It's B take A. Now I plan to replace this expression in this place. So once I do this substitution, I will have CD equals to this expression. And now I can, again, using the vector algebra, I can finally present the formula for the vector AD, the one we're looking for, the one which will help us to identify the Point D, AD is the AC plus C, that's a triangle rule. In this triangle, for AC I will use the little a, for CD I will use the formula we've got in here. That's what that will be. And then I will transfer this a little bit, I will just sort of open the brackets and combine all of the A's together. If I do that, I'll have the expression like this. And that's effectively the final answer for the question how to identify the point D. If I aim, let me repeat this, if I aim to find the point D which splits my given segment in given proportions, so I will need to have M parts here and n parts here, the answer to this in vector terms 
meaning a g vector, is given by the following expression. This expression, it can be simplified slightly if we introduce, often we use the Greek letters for that, if we introduce the lambda in place of this fraction, we can spot that this lambda is between 0 and 1. I put here less or equal and less or equal, but effectively it will be strictly less and strictly less than 1 if m and n are integers, positive integers. And if I use this lambda symbol, this expression will become far nicer looking. It will be like this. Such an expression, the one which we see here on the right hand side, it's called the convex combination of two vectors a and b with a coefficient lambda. Another way to write this is actually to use two Greek letters, one for one take lambda and one for lambda, alpha and beta. Of these two numbers, we can register the following properties, each of them between 0 and 1. In fact, again, they will be strictly between 0 and 1 because of the fact that m and n are positive integers. Another fact I can register about these two numbers is that they, when you add them, they 1. And the expression for my AG takes even simpler form in terms of this alpha and beta like this. In such form, this expression often also referred to as convex combination of two vectors. The geometrical interpretation of this combination is this. When you alter this lambda, I mean, originally we set this lambda or we set these alphas and betas to be relevant to this quotient m to n, but effectively you can take any real number between 0 and 1 for lambda, or you can take any real number between 0 and 1 for alpha and beta, as long as they satisfy these two relations. And when you allow to do that, when you allow to freely take any number between 0 and 1 for lambda, this point G will trace this entire segment between C and B. This point D will trace this entire segment between C and and B. When lambda hits exactly 0, AD will be exactly A. So this point D will coincide with C. When lambda is exactly 1, AD will be exactly B. So point D will coincide with B. For all other values between 0 and 1 strictly, or between 0 and 1 proper, D will be somewhere between the C and B points. And that's how you finish this video. If you like this video, click the like button. If you have any comments, leave them below this video. If you are a teacher or an instructor and you would like to reuse this video in your own class, there's a link in the description to this video which explains how you can do this with minimal effort. So have a look at that link and let me know if, you, if it works for you. If not, send me a quick comment and I will help you to make it work.